This year marks 25 years since the foundation of Canada's newest territory, Nunavut. The massive territory is home to 36,000 people. It boasts natural beauty, traditional Inuit arts and culture, and large fishing and natural resources industries. At the same time, it is struggling with issues like housing, water supply, and in-territory in elder care. So, what will 2024 look like for Nunavut? Joining us live from Iqaluit with a look ahead to the next year in his territory is Premier PJ Ayahum. Premier, welcome. Uh, good morning, Anne-Marie. So health care is a crisis in every province and territory in this country, and it's an important issue for many people in Nunavut, and that's providing in-territory care for your elders. Right now, many of those seniors in need of long-term care have to relocate to Ottawa. So Nunavut is opening a new facility. That's happening in the Rankin Inlet. What challenges does this help solve? Absolutely. Uh, right now, we don't have the capacity to, to look after our elders who require that specialized care. Uh, we're very thankful for the partnership we have with Ontario, uh, where we rely on the services there. Uh, but yeah, this year we're very excited. We've been investing heavily on infrastructure. Uh, and this year we're opening our first uh, elder care facility that allows us to be able to uh, look after our, our elderly who really deserve uh, the dignity that they deserve to stay home. Uh, so uh, the one in Rankin that will be opening uh, this coming year, so we're very excited and continue to to look forward to opening uh, further facilities right here in Iqaluit as well as Cambridge Bay. Oh, I can't imagine the support and the what that will mean to families who you know won't have to fly mm -hmm. long distances or, or for the seniors in care to be alone. Another issue that's plaguing a lot of the country is housing. And once again, your territory mm -hmm. has some unique challenges here. Nunavut is planning to build 3,000 new housing units by 2030 under the Nunavut 3,000 housing collaboration. So how far along are you at achieving that goal, Premier? Uh, yes, housing has been a crisis in the north in Nunavut for decades. Uh, as a government, we really took that as a, as a priority uh, and mentioned we'd do something different. I'm really proud to be able to announce that in the two years we've been in government, uh, we've uh, put record number of investments. Uh, we've put quarter of a billion dollars into the housing uh, continuum here in the two years we've been here. Uh, we're, we've been able to build uh, over 350 units, and 350 units may not sound a lot to a lot of the viewers uh, listening, uh, where you're seeing major uh, condo units being built right downtown in a lot of these centers, mm. but 350 units is uh, incredible for us. Uh, to, as you're probably aware, uh, Nunavut has 25 distinct communities uh, spread across uh, three time zones uh, as the largest jurisdiction and every of those communities does not have road access. So you could imagine the logistical challenges we were faced with, yeah. uh, but we're very proud to be able to build up to 350 units uh, this past year and to, to mirror that this coming year, but to, to have invested up to that amount. Uh, but we need a partner. Uh, we really need Ottawa uh, to come in as a partner, and we've been seeking uh, for them to be able to match the $250 million that we put on the, on the table there. I, you know, I'm so glad when you put that into context for us, you forget <laughs> that the size of none of it means three separate time zones. Uh, a report came out this <laughs> fall about the water crisis in Iqaluit. How much progress has none of it made assuring that there's not going to be any more scenarios where an entire city had no access to potable water? Oh, absolutely. The basic infrastructures like water uh, are so critical. Uh, as I mentioned, when you're a fly-in, fly-out community and you have no access to roads, so we went through a, a crisis here, uh, went through a challenging time here in Nikhaluit, and I'm thankful for the, the investment that Prime Minister Trudeau had made two years ago, uh, that the municipality here, that the city of Nikhaluit, uh, was successful in uh, so we're continuing to work with them uh, very diligently to ensure that uh, these age aging infrastructure that we see in our communities are up to date. Uh, there's many uh, things I, I truly believe uh, that we have to invest in, and the basic uh, water infrastructure is so crucial uh, right across our communities. Uh, so those investments that we've been making, as well as uh, the federal government, uh, are critical uh, for us to be able to move forward. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to, to make those investments moving forward. Premier, it is such a pleasure to speak with you. It is a part of the country I have not yet traveled to, but have always wanted to be there. It was a great pleasure to speak with you today. Enjoy your five hours of sunlight that you're going to have today. 
Yeah, I would love to have you come up here. Uh, you're always welcomed here. As you mentioned, it's uh, very beautiful. The people are so warm. Uh, we have such a resilient young population, uh, but there's many great things happening and I'm looking forward to, to accomplishing some great things here this year. Premier, thanks again. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.